These are two tips for every legend in Apex. Let's go. Vantage. When you go to jump to Echo, you can press crouch at any point in the air to stop your momentum. If you do so, you'll be able to draw out your weapon faster and fall down faster. Doing this while you are trying to attack enemies is a very strong strategy. However, keep in mind you will not be able to access the double jump at the end of the tactical. Vantage's passive displays what legend you're currently looking at along with what types of armor that entire team has. It can spot enemies through some degree of visual obstruction like windows or leaves, but will not work when enemies are behind walls or buildings. This will come into play when you're using Vantage's ultimate, which her passive also pairs well with. Newcastle. There is no such thing as a free revive. All revives take some risk, and Newcastle is no exception. So if an enemy is challenging the revive and it's unlikely that you'll get it off, don't hesitate to cancel the revive and play your teammate's knockdown shield as cover. This may allow you to get a knock and then instantly go and scoop your teammate back up. Newcastle's tactical lasts for 20 seconds and has a 15 second cooldown, as long as it doesn't get destroyed. In order to rotate the shield, you have to be in between the drone and the shield. If you are behind the little drone trying to rotate it, it won't work. It will just stay facing the same direction it was, but will move to the area you direct it to. Wraith. The phase is rarely ever a get out of jail free card. It's more often used as a slight repositioning tool. Most wraiths wind up phasing too late, either resulting in them dying before the tactical actually activates or getting in too bad of a situation only to have the enemies chase them down. So while you're about to phase, really think about where you came from and where you should go from here. You may have to slightly reposition behind some cover, but still turn around and shoot your enemies as they try to follow you. If you jump while setting her portal and an enemy chases, it could be a free knock if they take it. However, once they are knocked, they will not be able to crawl back into the portal. Keep in mind, this will work both ways. There have been many times where teammates have tried to portal me out while I've been knocked, but they jumped first and I'm unable to reach the portal. Jumping off some higher ground while setting a portal is also how most players try to kidnap opponents while using Wraith's portal. Crypto. I still always come across cryptos on my team who don't know about checking the banners. If you use Crypto's drone, you can look at one of the nearby apex banners on the map to see how many teams are within a 200 meter range from you. You can then ping the banner to tell your teammates how many squads are in range. This should be utilized often throughout your matches. However, if you're not briefly scouting your surroundings, sending out an EMP, or grabbing your teammates' banners, you should get out of your drone. Some cryptos spend far too long in their drone, often resulting in their teammates being in 2v3 gunfights. Revenant. If you ever take the totem with a cracked armor, well, while you're in shadow form, you can use a finisher and you'll completely refill your body shield. This is the only way you can heal in shadow form. If you're in death protection and the timer is running out and you don't want to be the only one exposed to a potentially disadvantaged fight, either try to deliberately get sent back to the totem or throw a grenade on yourself to get sent back. It's always better to reset the fight than have a totem push, backfire, and one of you go down while your teammates are back at the totem. This is a huge reason why Revenant's ultimate can wind up screwing over your team if you execute the push poorly. Seer. When using Seer's ultimate, keep two things in mind. One, it will last 30 seconds, and two, it can be destroyed. Assess where the enemies are and try to put the ult behind some cover so it has a low chance of being destroyed. And also, use it right when you're about to take the fight. Way too often I see Seer's place the ultimate in a spot that can be easily destroyed, and essentially you just ruined your advantage. Seer's tactical should rarely be used as an opening in a fight. There will be some niche cases where it could be helpful, but it's generally better if you use it after your team has gotten a knock or done some damage. Seeing how this ability can cancel revives, heals, abilities, and show you how much health and shield that enemy has along with their current location for about 7 seconds, well, the upside to using it after dealing damage or getting a knock is much higher than using it as an opening in a fight. This is much different than a legend like Bloodhound. And speaking of which, let's talk about Bloodhound. Now, Bloodhound is a pretty straightforward legend, however, some people still don't know that Bloodhound scan is a cone shape, so always make sure to look in the general direction that you suspect enemies are in while scanning. If you have any suspicion or just want to double check an area, don't hesitate to scan it. It can often be used as a process of elimination. Bloodhound's ultimate is powerful. Remember, you'll get more scans during this time and you'll be able to scan quicker, so make sure to use them. Despite the 30% speed increase, you do not get any additional health or shield, so don't get too ahead of your teammates and get yourself into some trouble. However, that said, when taking 1v1s while in the ultimate, this should give you an advantage as tracking a Bloodhound when they're moving 30% 
100% faster is not always an easy task. Mirage, always use the decoys from behind some cover so that enemies have a harder time realizing who is the real Mirage. If an enemy can clearly see you send out the decoy, they'll generally know which is the fake one and which is the real one. But this also works for Mirage's ultimate too. Now, if one of your teammates is knocked and you're going for a revive, always make sure to use his ultimate or his tactical and control the decoys. Try to make sure the decoys are a little distance from where you are reviving so that it confuses the enemy even more. If they shoot the decoys, this will also reveal their location to you as you're reviving your teammate. That way, when you complete the revive, you're able to shoot them and know where they are quicker than they know where you are. For Rampart, Rampart's ultimate is one of two guns in the entire game that can completely destroy doors. If an enemy is playing a door and healing or just stalling on it, get your ultimate out and fry them. Most players will not expect it and they will be dead before they can even blink. Another tip for Sheila is when you have Sheila out, make sure that if you zoom in with it and then stop shooting or holster Sheila that you remember to zoom out. Too many times I will pull Sheila back out and start shooting again, but I'm too zoomed in for how close my opponent is, thus resulting in a much slower tracking speed on my enemy. Next up is Caustic. Now I've been giving this tip out for years, but rarely do I see other Caustics in my lobby pull it off successfully. It may sound simple, but here it goes. His ultimate should be used when enemies are occupying a small space, indoors preferably, but once you throw it on them, wait for a second for the room to fill, then pounce. Unless they use an ability to escape, they will be slowed, stunned, losing health, and won't be able to see well. You wanna be like a rattlesnake and strike when this is occurring. If you identify a team backed into any sort of corner and they don't have a Watson gen up, you should be able to win that fight 10 out of 10 times. Second tip, caustic barrels can be used as cover. You can activate it yourself if need be and crouch behind it while you get a heal off. Of course, they can be destroyed by taking 150 damage, but as long as the barrel was already previously out, it should always be able to serve as some form of cover if you need it to. Also, it's important to note if a trap is activated and then later destroyed, the gas will still linger for a few seconds even after the trap is gone. Seconds matter in Apex and this could really come in handy for you. For Mad Maggie, if an opponent is behind a door but you know they're already weak, you can elect to use your riot drill. However, if they back off the door, it will take time for the door to be destroyed and if you then open the door to chase them, you may wind up taking damage from your own riot drill, so use this with caution in these moments. I have found that if an opponent is behind a door and they're not weak or I don't know if they're weak, I'll always elect to use my ultimate if I have it. This will break down the door, push them back, and stun them, and this gives me a brief but solid advantage over them. Do keep in mind, with Maggie's new buffs that she received this season, her ultimate is able to take out just about every placeable object in the game. Things such as Gibby's Bubble, Rampart, and Newcastle Walls, and many other things. Watson, if you're anticipating an enemy coming through a door, place one electrical node on the outside of the door. Then, go inside, block the door, and when the opponent is in front of the door, staring you down or trying to kick the door, connect the fence on the other side, so that it zaps them and destroys the door. Then, one-clip them and laugh. When placing Watson's ultimate, always assess line of sight. Sometimes the gen could theoretically get shot from multiple angles, but always try to look for the place with the lowest probability that it will get destroyed. If you're not indoors, don't be afraid to place it down if you're transitioning in some open area and your team is forced to take a fight. Even placing it behind some small amount of cover like a rock or a tree could be all your team needs for it to assist with the fight. Pathfinder, if you learn to time pressing the jump button right when the grapple connects, it will lift you higher and give you more control over your movement. This should be used on about 90% of the grapples you attempt. Now a huge reason why newer players struggle with this legend is because they don't understand this tip and how to control his grapple. Pathfinder does have a huge skill gap, but he's honestly one of the most fun legends to use once you figure out his grapple. You can also learn to do something called a zipline super jump. Now this works on all ziplines, map made or pathfinder made, but what you're going to want to do is interact with the zipline and then spam jump twice. You'll get a huge boost in the air if the zipline is a horizontal zip. This will add a layer of unpredictability to your movement and enemies will be surprised if you do this in front of them. You can also utilize this to access some higher ground. For Octane, if you use the stim just before finishing a medkit or phoenix kit, you can get the stim effects without losing any of your health. Most players know that if they melee the jump pad, they will bounce straight up. But if you didn't know, you can melee and press backwards to go up and backwards. 
at a diagonal angle. Right, I'll give you three tips for Octane. Stop stimming into the jump pad because it doesn't make you go any further on the pad. You should stim once you land from the jump pad. Bangalore, try not to smoke your teammates, particularly indoors. Now this is a huge mistake a lot of players make while playing bang. They're usually doing it with good intentions, but the smoke can be so disorienting for players that most would prefer you not to do this. Of course, there will be some small exceptions to this tip, like if your teammate's running out in the open and they need to cross from point A to point B and they're taking gun fire but by and far try to avoid smoking your teammates bangalore's passive is a reactive one that responds to enemies when they're engaging with you so utilize the short-term speed boost whenever you can either by running for cover or returning fire with the increased speed as it makes you a difficult target to hit lifeline is another one of the initial legends who feels pretty simple to use so there aren't too many advanced tips for her per se but i still see common mistakes the best lifelines will multitask with their health drone they will place it behind some cover continue fighting or place it in and heal their shields at the same time. They may throw it down after armor swapping and they can heal while looting, or throw it down right after they stick a revive so that drone is already out to assist the teammate who just got picked up. Lifeline's ult can double as cover in a pinch. If you have it available and lack some critical cover, don't be afraid to call it in. You may also find a handy armor swap on it. This is particularly helpful in late game scenarios. Loba, if you go to use your tactical, note that if you throw from a standstill or a walk, you cannot run while you're waiting to teleport. But if you throw while running, you will be able to keep running and can slide while you're waiting for her bracelet to land. You can use her tactical through windows, which will always create an element of surprise for your opponents. You can do this if you need to escape or if you want to be aggressive with it. But be careful teleporting into direct line of sight, as there's an animation Loba does before she can pull her gun out. Fuse. You can zoom in with Fuse's ultimate by just aiming down your sights with the ultimate out. This will place a more accurate mother load, or you can use it to just scout out the area. This has honestly helped me out so much in moments where I don't have any long range optics, but I want a good look at my surroundings. Launching frag grenades with Fuse's passive shoots them 70% faster. They will bounce off walls harder due to this extra speed. You can use this to your advantage to damage enemies with a good old bank shot, but never try to use vertical frag grenades with Fuse's passive, as they will blow up in the air well before they come back down to land. Instead, if you want to throw a vertical frag grenade, toggle the grenadier off and then throw the frag grenade. Then once you're done, toggle the passive back on. Ash. Make sure to scan death boxes to find remaining enemy teams. I've played with so many random ashes that don't know they can mark death boxes. Yes, you can use your mini map to see where people just fought, but once you walk up to a death box, there will be a prompt for you to mark remaining enemies. So once you mark it, it will ping the enemies, and if they are far from you, you can reflect on your map key to find exactly where they're at. The ping won't last long, so keep a mental note of it. However, on the flip side, it's important to know that marking the enemies lets them know they have been revealed. So if that team has only killed one team during that match, they will have a pretty good idea of where you are at too. Any player who takes an ash portal will face in a predetermined direction. You can use this to your advantage by immediately walking backwards after exiting your phase to take any enemies who follow you by surprise. This tip only works if the enemies cannot see the other half of the portal. You obviously don't want to be walking backwards if they just have line of sight on you and see where you're at. Gibraltar. When playing as Gibby, you should always carry a shotgun. You want a single fire weapon with a high damage per second for bubble fights. Automatic weapons in a bubble fight are extremely awkward and not nearly as effective. Most bubble fights revolve around shooting, playing cover, shooting again, and then repeating this process. Having an automatic gun while you're trying to emulate this process will not always work. You should nearly always aim down sights while playing as Gibby. The additional 50 HP you get from his gun shield passive is extremely strong in 1v1s and has a very short cooldown. This reason can also make playing Gibby feel sort of awkward. Most players aren't used to aiming down sights this much up close, but if you can get the hang of it, it's worth it. You should also practice making wider strafes as Gibby has the largest hitbox in the game, so smaller strafes aren't nearly as effective. Horizon. If a Horizon uses her tactical to block a doorway and you need to get through it, all you have to do is slide through the door and the gravity lift. If you try to walk out, the gravity lift will block you from going out and just probably send you into the ceiling and depending on the circumstances, could be very bad for you and your team. Now, despite the recent nerfs to Horizon's ultimate, pairing it with throwables is still very effective. You can throw the ultimate at doorways. If you know enemies are behind it, it will blow off the doors and then you can nade spam them. Or you can just ult the side of a building as this ability pulls through walls. Try to always pair this with some other damage dealing component. Valkyrie, while using her ultimate and being shot at, you can make small curves in the air and also utilize skydive emotes to try to avoid getting hit. This is even more valuable now given Valkyrie's recent nerfs. 
You can no longer just spam Valk's jetpack passive. The fuel consumption is 33% lower than previous seasons, so you really have to monitor the fuel gauge and keep in mind where it's at at all times. Try to be a little bit more conservative when using this ability in season 14. Oh, and speaking of which, if you're interested in five tips to reach diamond rank, well, I covered everything in this video here. Thanks for watching. Peace.